Who's your captain? There's uh, something that's going around in Christianity lately. Apparently, they're calling each instead of calling each other legalists. Well, they still do that too. They call them spiritual adulterers. Apparently, I've been checking around. I was accused of being a spiritual adulterer because I kept the Ten Commandments and I teach these. Keeping and teaching the Ten Commandments is uh, considered the law of Moses, apparently. The law of Moses? What? Well, <clears throat> the name of the man they call Musha is Moses today. They change names and Everything's getting twisted around, and things are called different things. You know, the 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 term spiritual adultery uh, is not found in scripture, but it, it's referred to as harlotry or adultery when you do things that are not pleasing to Yahuwah and are related directly to pagan idolatry. All disobedience is idolatry. I mean, even a person that doesn't believe that Yahuwah exists is committing idolatry because they serve, they're worshiping, worshiping themselves. So they're placing themselves above Yahuwah. A person that doesn't know that there's uh, an existing Allahim at all is called a fool in scripture, but that's Yahuwah's opinion. And I'll, I'll go with his opinion every time. His word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Psalm 119, 105. That was the verse that grabbed me or stood by me for many years. I rode by a, uh, a place where the Yahudim served Yahuwah and they had that carved in stone, and I kept reading that every day that I passed by, and it stuck with me. It was the only scripture that I was really exposed to for several decades, and I thought that was a compelling scripture. Your word is a light to my feet, a lamp to my feet, and a light for my path. Um, and it's powerful stuff when you actually use scripture I'm going to go about this in a more relaxed way a little unregimented but uh, it kind of made me this person that left a comment on my post often has a different perspective than I have about t teachings and of course Pharisees were doctrinal controllers. In other words, they were trying to make the traditions of the fathers more important than Yahuwah's word. And I will be talking a little bit about his word here in this scripture because it's the most important and precious thing to me because it is a light for my path. And I lived without it for half my life until I was 35 and now I'm an older person I'm going on 74 are commandment keepers spiritual adulterers I mean does that sound like insanity it's unsane is what it is this comment that was left on a post accused me of committing spiritual adultery apparently because I obey and teach the commandments of Yahuwah the one they called Jacob, and his real name is Yaqub. The Arabs actually spell it and pronounce it more correctly because they're Hebrews, and they weren't exposed to the language errors and corruptions of the Gentiles. In the in the scriptures, you'll see it written James. In James chapter four, we see a description of adultery of those who prefer to be friends with the world. You know, the traditions of men. And it's interesting because today, the 20, well, this is the fourth Roman month of 2023. And today is the sixth day of the fourth month. This is the first day of unleavened bread. 
anything that has is bread and it's and it's puffed up, that represents something. It's not really about the bread. It's pointing from the bread to something else. So we do that too. But what it is, the leaven is men's teachings. And Yahushua referred to it when he was getting into the boat and he was saying, beware the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Well, beware of what? And they were talking among themselves, the first Nazarene. What is he talking about? Do, do we not bring enough bread? So he said, how are you so thick that you don't understand what I'm talking about? I'm not talking about bread. I'm talking about the teachings of the Pharisees. The teachings of the Pharisees avoid Yahuwah's word, and they go after the traditions of the fathers. That's exactly what we're going to talk about here. Now, let's take, for example, a common thing that we see every day that is spiritual adultery. The inherited things that we see all around us every day. Steep spires, things like that. The mudra, or hand gestures, of folded hands is a Hindu custom called namaste. And it refers to the idea of the spirit in me bows to the spirit in you. We don't bow to spirits. We only bow to Yahuwah and towards his name. The, the city of Yerushalayim at the, at the moment where he placed his name forever. Now, this namaste thing, <laughs> when you see people bowing like with their hands folded, or praying like with their hands folded, is a Hindu thing. And it came from Babel. And uh, this is spiritual adultery. But they don't know it. Not serene guard and teach the commandments to all nations as we were commissioned to do at Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Revelation 22, 14 affirms this. This is what it says, quote, Blessed are those doing his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and to enter into the gates of the city, unquote. Obedience is the determining factor for those who claim to know Yahuwah. If you read 1st Yehuchanan or 1st John chapter 2 verse 4, the one who says, I know him and does not obey his commandments is a liar. And the truth is not in him. Unquote. Yasha Yahu, the one they call Isaiah, they change everything. And Yahuwah doesn't change. Yasha Yahu, the prophet, at Chapter 55, verses 8 through 11. Quote, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says Yahuwah. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word, let me show you that word that he's talking about, the Ten Commandments, written in stone with his own finger. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Unquote. The law of Moses is confused quite often, or the law, the, the instructions in living for all mankind, refer to it Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verses 13 and 14, that all men are to guard and obey. Well, that's for all mankind. Well, what is that? It's the eternal covenant that never will pass away. It defines what sin is. And it's inside the ark, 
but it now is written on our hearts, those who have turned and pledged themselves to Yahuwah. And he comes and helps us. He's the helper, the counselor. He's the mighty Allahim, the Prince of Peace. And he makes us restored to favor with Yahuwah because he helps us obey his commandments. To obey is better than offering blood or sacrifice of any kind. The old covenant that was prescribing the offering of animal blood was not written in stone. It was written in a pouch, written in an animal hide scroll, and it was hung beside the ark. Deuteronomy 31, verse 26. And it is now obsolete. You don't need any animal blood. That's adultery, and that would be idolatry too. If you were to rebuild the temple and start offering animals, do you know what that would do to his heart? He'd say, what? You know, my offering of myself wasn't good enough for you. Yeah, well, that's the thing that Christians mistake. They've been taught by their theologians that the Ten Commandments inside the ark are some kind of problem now if you obey them. And that's why I was accused of the spiritual adultery, I believe. It's just a mistaking of atonement. That's all it is. And I don't blame the person at all, you know, because they just misunderstand. Because the traditions of their fathers have they've inherited nothing but falsehood. Yermiyahu, the prophet they call Jeremiah, at chapter 16, 19, says the, 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 nation, the, the Gentiles will come from the ends of the earth and they will say, our fathers have inherited nothing but lies and futility and things that are not profitable. That's because they were told the wrong way to live. Now, these old, the old covenant that prescribed the offering of animal blood is not what Malachi chapter 4 is referring to. Malachi chapter 4, read those six verses. There's a fire, a burning fire coming. The wrath of Yahuwah on the day of Yahuwah. And it's those who are disobedient that are going to be burned up. Disobedient to what? Animal blood? No, that would be idolatry. Now, it's for sure. That would be the wrong form of worship. That temporary priesthood is now obsolete. We're a new priesthood. We're under a new high priest, one that never dies. And he's going to raise up his priesthood and show us to the world. We're under Melchizedek. Yahushua is Melchizedek. You didn't know that, did you? You weren't taught. He reveals these things to you. That old covenant was temporary because it was imperfect. It says it in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13. It's talking about the old covenant. And Marcion split scripture up back in the second century. He's calling the writings the old covenant. That's, that's not the Old Covenant. The Old Covenant was the animal blood. And the New Covenant. Well, the renewed covenant in Yahushua's blood is permanent. It completely redeems. The eternal covenant of loving kindness is written in the stone tablets by Yahuwah's finger. And it's called perfect. It's Psalm 19, verse 7. And these instructions in how to love Yahuwah and love your neighbor, define sin. And sin is disobedience. You disobey any one of those, and you've committed, you've, you've broken all of them. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. They're written behind me on this blanket. It's an image of the stone at Los Lunas, the Ten Commandments gate stone. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, have no other before my face. Well, do you know his name? The key of knowledge is knowing who you worship. Yahuwah. It's written in four vowels. yod He uah I have lots of videos about it. 
they define sin. That's the first commandment. The second is you do not bow to images. The third is you do not cast the name of Yahuwah, your Elohim, to ruin. Number four is remember Shabbat. Don't forget it. Remember Shabbat and set it apart. It's, it's the seventh day of the week. You rest. You don't do buying and selling. Number five is honor your father and your mother. Number six is you do not murder. Number seven, you do not break wedlock. Number eight, you do not steal. Number nine, you do not bear a malicious witness against your neighbor. Number 10, you do not covet your neighbor's wife, house, field, servants, animals, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. And Yahushua said, I give you a renewed commandment of love one another as I have loved you. Yahushua said there's no greater love than, a, than one who lays down his life for his friends. Yahushua purchased us with his own blood, according to Acts 20, verse 28. He's the one that shed his blood, and he is the Ruach HaKodesh. Because it says in those verses in Acts 20, 28, the Ruach HaKodesh shed his own blood to purchase us. And we're being restored to favor. And that's our mission. And that's for the forgiveness of our lawlessness. Being without law. Being without instruction. Living without knowing him and knowing what he that, that when knowing what pleases him how will you know unless someone comes and speaks his name to you how will you hear the message of repentance repent for the day of Yahuwah draws near the day of Yahuwah is going to be serious it's going to be so amazing he's going to punish the lawless the ones that are disobedient He's not coming to punish, punish people who obey his commandments. That's insane to even think such a thing. Disobedience, the wages of which is death. Romans 6, verse 23. If we call Yahuwah by another name, we violate his commandments. And this was illustrated by Aliyahu, they call him Elijah. Aliyahu at Mount Carmel at 1 Kings chapter 18. L-O-R-D is the translation of the Hebrew word B-E-L, or they call him B-A-A-L. If L-O-R-D is B-A-A-L, what is that saying? They changed his name and put it in the scriptures in the translations. L-O-R-D is not our shepherd. Yahuwah is our shepherd. And I've got a couple of ending questions here for you. Is December 25th the date of Yahushua's birth? No. It's the date of all the solar deities that have ever existed, who are really all Nimrod. December 25th. You're celebrating a birthday, which is never seen in the scriptures except observed by pagans. And I have another question. Is E-A-S-T-E-R the mother of harlots? I-S-H-T-A-R. I think so. Now, who will be the first to be taken and burned on the day of Yahuwah? Those who obey men's traditions? Or those obeying Yahuwah's commandments. Revelation 22, quote, Blessed are those doing his commandments, that they might have the right to the tree of life and to enter the gates of the city. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next exciting video. Like and subscribe. Bye.